Hey there guys, welcome back to the Two Players Podcast. This is episode 8. We are doing a lot of things in this episode. We're going to talk about some news. We're going to talk about games we've been playing, including Overwatch. And then we're going to top it all off with a spoiler discussion on Captain America Civil War. We know that it is of... It's, it's pretty late by the time you guys watch this. But, you know, it's still a movie that we both were very excited for. And we just want to talk about it. So... Let's get into the first news topic. It is Splatoon Amiibos. They are releasing, um, I believe, the Squid Sisters, and then they are re-releasing uh, variation colors. Yeah. Uh, they're releasing both of them together, right? Like, you can only buy both of them? Uh, you could buy both of them, or you could buy them individually, I believe. Oh, okay. And then I think the recolors are in one pack. I'm not sure if they're going to do that individually. They might. I'm not sure, but... Just from what I'm seeing from this uh, Amiibo News article, uh, they have pictures of every single Amiibo separately, so I'm assuming that they're doing it like that. I mean, these so. look sick. I'll, I'll probably buy them. <laughs> I, uh, I also think they yeah they, they unlock brand new songs and stuff also, so they do have a in-game uh, feature as well. Uh, ever since I, uh, the uh, Smash Bros. Amiibo stopped, I feel like Amiibos have taken a... You know, a, a little bit of a backseat. <laughs> Which is good. Because be- <laughs> too yeah, many of them. <laughs> it's good because, you know, my wallet gets to take a little bit of a break. But um, I just want them to do more like Mario, more Zelda. You know, I know that they're coming out with the Kirby one. But I just want them to do more with it. You know? Well, when, does, when the new Zelda game comes out, it's probably going to be a lot more Amiibos. So. Yeah. Hopefully- Actually, there wasn't any more like Star Fox ones, right? When that came out, there was no Star Fox? No, there were no Star Fox ones. It, uh... Yeah, I don't think there were any. I th- I think um, Miyamoto wanted a little R wing, like yeah, a, like R wing amiibo, but I don't think that ever came to fruition. Or it is still coming, but we just don't know yet. So yeah, All let's right. just hope that uh, Nintendo comes up with some more amiibo ideas other than just recolors and then Squid Sisters. Yeah, the recolors know? are so. kind of lame, but yeah, I, I guess mean, like the weird. orange um, squid's pretty cool, but like the boy and girl are kind of weird. Yeah. I'd rather have the orange uh, girl squid lady. All right. All right. So uh, my number nine finally got a release date. It's coming out June 21st for uh, uh, North America and Asia and June 24th for everyone else. So this is a game that I think we've already expressed our opinion about being <laughs> that I'm not really that excited anymore. I and mean, yeah, since it's been delayed so many times, the hype for the game has obviously dwindled down. It's been, I think someone said it's been more than a year since its initial release date or something yeah. like that, which is crazy. Like, you you had a set release date, you had this, this, this huge amount of money to work with, and you still haven't released it yet. So the fact that it's coming out within like a month from now, that's pretty good, but... You know, it should have came out a year ago or something like <laughs> it that. It should have came out way sooner than it actually did. And, yeah, like, but... I'm just not hyped for it anymore. I'll probably still buy it, I guess, if it's good. I'm really hoping it's good, but from what I'm seeing, it looks like eh, it's okay. Like, it doesn't look like the best thing in the world. Yeah. Uh, I still have it pre-ordered because uh, I pre-ordered it when it was going to come out a year ago. And then <laughs> they delayed it, like, 20 times. So Wait, for what? Uh, what? I. I pre-ordered the uh, special edition thing. It, it comes with, like, the figure and stuff, so... Oh, okay. Yeah, so... Um, we'll just have to wait and see because, uh, you know, this is this is a very iffy game on if it'll be good or be really bad, you know? So, let, let's just hope that um, uh, I- Inafune has delivered his promise on bringing a spiritual successor of Mega Man to the new consoles. Yep. Uh, we didn't talk about this last week, or two weeks ago, I should say. Uh, Leffen has a visa update, so he is able to attend um, tournaments up until July, the end of July, I-, I believe. So he is able to attend Evo Evo, and, I believe, Apex. I believe. Yeah, I think so. So uh, this was a huge thing. Like, I will put a link in the description below to this article from tsm.gg along with the petition that's going around to go in, um, make make Smash Bros and like just like getting P one visas much easier. I think. Yeah, for it's, all gamers, like for all yeah. esports athletes. Yeah. Because um, if you're a athlete or like an esports athlete, I guess for like League of Legends, it's a lot easier to get a P one um, visa because League of Legends is a very well known esport. 
but when you're talking about Smash Brothers, it's not as big because N- Nintendo isn't the one holding these major events. It's mainly just people that love the game, people that are pretty much staples. You know, like Evo has been hosting Melee for a while now. Um, Apex has been doing it as well. Like, there's just all of these tournaments that have been doing Melee for a while, and it's pretty big. You know, I love watching Melee. Like, it's always fun because you don't know what's going to happen. There's an upset, like, almost every single tournament, at least one. So the game is definitely um, fun to watch, and it's pretty stressful to play from what I've heard. Yeah, um, the reason why it's so hard for Smash in particular to get, like, visas is because unlike League and Dota and stuff, uh, Smash doesn't really have, like, a League. Like, it doesn't have, like, a yeah. LCS or anything. So it makes it harder for uh, these people to get visas because they don't, like, they don't see it as, a like, a real thing. Because Nintendo doesn't really help either. So, yeah, because if Nintendo had like a Melee League or something like that, which I'm pretty sure they'll never do because yeah, Melee doesn't not. make the money at all. Unless they re- they do either a virtual console release for the Wii U or NX or whatever, or they just straight up re-release it, which would be awesome, to be yeah, honest. Melee, like it, Melee Reborn or something. I don't Melee know. HD or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, um, since Melee doesn't have a League or anything like that, it, it's, it's definitely hard for... Um, players of this game to get P1 visas and thankfully um, Leffen got his because he's he's definitely one of the top 8 players in the world so I'm very happy that um, we could finally see him play in the United States um, tournaments especially Evo because um, last year he he kind of choked a little I would say because he he got eliminated like pretty early. Like I, we didn't even see him like in grand finals yeah. or like, <laughs> losers finals or anything like that. So he he kind of shot himself in the foot, you know. But hopefully within this Evo, he will show that he is a lot better, and he has he has definitely been practicing. So he is kind of like a wild card because people don't exactly know how good he actually is, you know. Yeah, that's because why he's every really single fun time to watch. every single time he gets eliminated, it's by like a Samus player, <laughs> and it's so. It's so disheartening because it's it, it's literally the same matchup that he loses to is Samus because he only, only plays Fox. Yeah. So let's just hope that Evo he doesn't doesn't lose to a Samus. Yeah, because he's probably gonna like get really depressed if he loses to another Samus. So. Yeah, like um, I forget what the tournament's called, but there was a tournament in Canada, and like right after he lost, he was like tweeting. Like spam and stuff. So. <laughs> it was so disheartening. Yeah, it, I'm like, oh it no, it was pretty depressing to be honest. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. Um, all right. So Nintendo's E3 will only be on the new Zelda. So obviously that's not that great. Um, <laughs> like so I, 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 Zelda. Bad. So Zelda is good, right? Zelda is a cool, cool yes, franchise. Yes, we know right? that the Legend of Zelda is a great series, but. We were wondering what is Nintendo going to do this E3, and it turns out that it looks like they're only going to do the new Zelda game, and that's dumb. Yeah. And since they're not going to show the NX, it's probably going to be the Wii U version. Yeah, and like I want to see the NX version, not the Wii U version, because I'll probably be buying the NX version anyway. If you know, yeah. it, they should have a bundle. That'd be cool, and it shows to be a They'll launch probably game. Probably do that. <laughs> But um, probably do that. That this is it. This is the only thing that like going to show at E3. I don't know. We might get like one more announcement, like a go oh, a 3DS game or something. I don't know. But this is like the only. I just only want them thing. to announce something else other than just Zelda Wii U. You I, know. I mean, I like I know I like I I've been excited for the Zelda game. Don't don't get me wrong, because I love Zelda. But like this isn't enough for an E3. This is like something you do for a direct like, in some random day. You know what I mean? Yeah, like a Zelda direct or something. like yeah, that. Yeah, this is not enough to hold an E3. I I know some people. Are, I, I'm excited. But it's just like it's not enough for an E3, because um, since they're only doing Zelda, it's like no one has anything else to expect from Nintendo, and automatically E3 hasn't even started yet, and, and people are saying that yeah, they lost E3 already. <laughs> yeah, like, it's like one game. Whatever Sony's gonna show is gonna be a lot better. Whatever Microsoft's gonna show is gonna be a lot better. Like, just showing one game is kind of like taking a huge risk, mind you. If they do like fail financially this year, which they have done in in the past, they'll. They'll survive because yeah, be Nintendo fine. has a lot of money. Yeah, they have a lot of money. They could last like a lot, like a long time. Like they could fail like a couple consoles before they like start realizing like we're gonna die soon. Which um, people are putting the question like, should they just become you know developers? Which I think that they shouldn't because Nintendo has their own little thing, and it's it's not about the money for them. It's all about having fun in gaming. I which mean, is if anything. 
if they may if the, if the nx fails they'll probably like move on to mobile stuff because that's the big thing in japan so they yeah. might cater more to that and like just stop doing console stuff forever i'm not sure though i don't think they'll do that because um you know it it what you do with a phone you can't do on like a wii u or anything like that yeah, it sells though yeah it does japan. sell it does make them money but um just just moving from like a, a game console to like a mobile thing i don't think they'll do unless they really really have to and that's like when they hit like the bottom point of their entire like career thing whatever you know like the history of nintendo would just basically end there so yeah, i mean nintendo's past e3s have been pretty garbage lately like last year's did not <laughs> impress me at all this year yeah like... they didn't really show much they showed um star, star fox. fox zero yeah. which was uh you know same old same old thing uh didn't they show the new mario and luigi game yeah uh, which ended up being okay <laughs> yeah oh like it the game has so much potential like you're you, you're combining mario and luigi with paper mario and you know uh it's turned just okay out, <laughs> turned out to be okay from what i heard and you just showed like a bunch of other crap like yeah it wasn't like they've been having a rough time like the, like this they haven't has they haven't kind. shown anything in a while that has like gotten fans really really excited which is disappointing because when smash bros was gonna come out those were like the most exciting times to be a nintendo fan i would say oh yeah and now that smash bros is, is out it's kind of just like what are we gonna get excited about now? Which is pretty much nothing. And like, it's funny because people were more hyped for a DLC for one game than like an actual game. So. Yeah, people people were excited for like Lucas and like Bayonetta and all these characters, and now it's like Zelda, only Zelda. Like that's not gonna please me, and I'm pretty sure it's not gonna please everyone. I mean, yeah, is... I'll like it, but I'm still salty. So, <laughs> so let's just move on. Uh, Pokemon Moon and Sun, they finally have details on the game. We got the new starters, which oh, yeah. is, um, we have a Roulette, which is the grass flying owl type. Yep. Um, we have Litten, which is it's the lit. fire <laughs> cat. Yeah. And then Popolio. I think that's how you right? say it. Okay. That's the water type seal. And no matter what they look like, I'm always going with the water starter. And I'm going to admit, Roulette's pretty cute, but I feel like the evolution is going to be like ugly. You know? <laughs> I, I I think grass flying is the awful type, and I usually pick the grass type. So, but I'm, I'm not <laughs> doing it this. Time. It looks it look I like it. I like what all the Lynn? designs. Lynn looks uh all right. Which one? Like design wise, the fire cat. Oh yeah, I'm I'm picking the fire cat just because I never picked the a fire starter, and I'm like, right, you know what? It, it's that it's 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 time. It's time. Yeah. I hope uh what happened last generation with X and Y doesn't happen again, where it's like, yeah, man, I'm gonna go with this starter, and then the evolutions come out, and it's like, ah, never mind. <laughs> it looks go like with trash, this one. Yeah. Yeah, because I got... What was that Pokemon? God damn it. Uh, uh... God damn it. It was, um, uh, Chespin chest, and... Chestnut? Chest... Oh my god, Chestnut looked ugly. I don't know what happened then... to Chespin, but, like, like, looked good, and then, like, its evolution is, like, <laughs> trash. <laughs> Big Walnut. Uh, actually, let me look up the Pokemon X and Y. So I haven't played that game in, like, Fennekin a couple years. Fennekin turned into, like, a weird furry thing. Oh, yeah, thing. Fennekin... Mm-hmm. Fennekin looked pretty good, and then the evolution came out, and... Uh, uh, <laughs> the only good looking one was a uh, good ninja. Uh, yeah, Froki. Everyone was like, "Hey, you know, Froki's alright," but you know, and then everyone jumped on Froki because they were like, "Ah, you know, his, his evolutions look better." It's <laughs> a pretty good. It's a good Pokemon. <laughs> and then like people that went with um, uh, the others were like, "Yeah, you know, it's a cute Pokemon." And then they evolved, and then they were like, "I regret everything." Basically, yeah, because I, I know um. Fennekin's final evolution was pretty mediocre. Even though it was a fire psychic, like that's a super good type. But whatever. It it just didn't do much. Uh Alright. What else? We also got the release date, which is um November eighteenth. I think so it's a little later good. for for EU. I think it's like five days later. Uh, it's not that bad. They True. usually get stuff like a month later. <laughs> and it's gonna be so. in the a Hawaii theme, which is pretty yeah. interesting. So it's gonna be on an island again, and then um, there's actually eight different trainers to choose from, which is good because last game, uh, I forget what the variety was, but I, I think it was, that it was it was like six. Yeah, it was more tones. limited. So yeah, now we get a little bit more variety. I'm probably gonna go with the um, uh, second boy. Probably. <laughs> second boy. <laughs> yeah, the second one. 
I'll not probably go for the third one because you know, got, I'm not light. I'm not that light. <laughs> yeah, you know the trainers look pretty good design wise. I would say. I don't know but... what's up with the female trainer's hat. It looks like a glove. Like I don't know what's wrong with her, <laughs> with her hat. Uh, but yeah, I just I don't want to play it. <laughs> like that's just all I want to do. Actually, which version are you gonna get? I'm gonna I'm get Sun. Pro- I'm gonna get Moon. I like Sun. I, I oh I guess just to talk about a legendary design. I really do like the legendary design. I've been hearing some people say it's uh, the overly design, which I don't I don't get. I think they look pretty cool. Yeah, I think they look fine to be honest. Like uh, the Sun legendary looks pretty good, and then the Moon one is just like a bat. So that's yeah. I really like the design. It looks nice. Yeah. So I'm know, pretty hyped. Nothing wrong with them. <laughs> Uh, it's not and, much to say because it's yeah, like it, oh. it, it's not really much to say. It's all just pictures, really, and then like the trailer that they showed us. So it's not uh, much to talk about, but you yeah, know, but I'm hyped. What, <laughs> what we got, you know, people are very excited about the three starters and the uh, release date. So I think that those are the main two things that people are most excited for. Yep. All right. So next we have the Assassin's Creed movie trailer. Um, this is Did actually. You watch it? I have not actually watched it. I think I watched oh, uh, Jeremy's thing on it though. No. Oh, Jeremy Johns. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I, that's fine. I, it's like, I I don't think I think this would be successful, right? Because it's like Assassin's Creed, and maybe like that gaming. Yeah. It doesn't have to. It's not that hard to do it in Assassin's Creed movie. I think. Yeah, because it's like. A, a casual person could be like, "Oh, Assassin's Creed, oh, Assassins are cool," and then they watch it. Like, you don't need to know about the video game. But if, like, I I do see a giant movement, I, and I think more video game movies are going to start being made now. If the Warcraft movie is su- uh, successful, I think we're going to see a lot more pop up. Um, and uh-huh. I, this is just the first one that's starting to pop up. But I do think more are going to start coming out. Which uh, is supposedly good. Supposedly they're already done with this movie or something oh. like that. <laughs> All right, let's make three more that are exactly the same. Uh, yeah, th- supposedly they're working on the sequel already. Like, God damn they're it. super <laughs> confident in this. So if it flops, you'll know why. But like that's what I heard. I I haven't seen any news articles. I just I was watching um a podcast and like or like listening to it and then like they were talking about the Assassin's Creed movie. And supposedly they're already done with it, or like close to being done, and now they're working on the sequel. But that could have been a false rumor or something like that. I don't know. But if they are done with it, and then they just start working on the sequel, that kind of worries me. So them just like, you know, like polishing it as much as they can, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad that video game movies are gaining more like more production value and stuff. Like yeah. the worker. Oh, let's not talk about Ratchet and Clank because that's. <laughs> uh, but um, the Warcraft movie looks uh, pretty good. The more trailers I see of it, the more I'm okay with it. This one seems pretty um okay. Uh, I just hope like you know they're good. <laughs> and if, then if, if they're, they're good, good, this will probably spawn a wave of like video game movies that yeah. are hopefully good. You know, you yeah, can always want, mess something I mean, up. Like how do you mess up the Ratchet and Clank movie? I'm still salty <laughs> over that. Okay, so let's move on from that. Uh, okay, let's talk about the games we've been playing. And last week, the Overwatch open beta was in full st- swing. And I played the crap out of that. I had like like 20-something hours in it. Yeah, I got into it like halfway through of the beta. All right, so if you don't know what the game is, it's the new IP by Blizzard. It's an FPS, um, what do you call it, hero shooter. Sort of like TF2, except you have instead of having like nine classes, you have like 21-something classes. Each one is like a FPS. You go capture. Yeah, there's bones. a lot of heroes. Yeah, that they can choose from. They all have different abilities and alts, sort of like a MOBA, um, but it's not really a MOBA at all because you don't push anything. I mean, you do, but you know, you don't. Kill uh, on certain anything. game modes. Yeah, like yeah, payload, like straight up from TF2 where you move a cart, uh, King of the Hill, um, capture points, all that fun stuff. The game. Is very good. It, it feels it's very objective based. It's yeah, it's it's, it's a team shooter. So most of that, yeah, it's mostly um, objective. Like do this. It doesn't matter how many kills you get because it's like you gotta make sure you're getting the objective done. You gotta make sure that you get the kills at the right time. That's basically how it works. Yeah, you wanna make sure to get team kills so they have to walk back to um to the objective and by that point you could capture it and, and stuff. Uh, the game feels super tight. Every every character I've played feels really good, and there are some un. Some balance issues, like Bastion, I feel <laughs> yeah. like is kind of annoying. Yeah, I, I, everyone just feels like Bastion's like dumb. Like I played him once, and he was 
he was pretty easy, <laughs> like to play, like in general. So yeah, I don't basically know. Maybe Bastion is just a they're gonna have to do something about him because like there's a lot of people complaining about him. Yeah, like everyone's complaining about Bastion. Um, who else is annoying? May is annoying because she just walks up to you, freezes you. Yeah, she you just head. walks up and then freezes and then just kills you. And then like her ulti like is so good if you have like a group with you. Mm-hmm. Because, like, you Straight just freeze up. a bunch of people, kill them, and then take the objective. Most annoying character. I always rage when I need to fight one of those things. I hate it. Personally, I hate Reaper because he's tanky and then he just does a lot of damage. Yeah, Reaper um, could just go into your back line and just wreck you without you yeah. noticing. Well, he's not necessarily tanky, but, you know, he has, like, a lot of health. So, like, and he does, like, a lot of damage if you get some yeah, shots on too. You. Because, like, when I play Soldier 76, I'm just, like, I can't kill him in a one-on-one like that. Like, I could beat him, like, later... If he, like, comes back for me after I, like, heal or something. But, like, just, like, straight up when he's, like, on me, no, I'm, I'm fucking dead. Yeah, but the game is super tight. Like, it feels so good to play. Yeah, it's pretty good. It feels so satisfying to kill someone, to capture an objective, to heal even. I was surprised how much I really like support in that game. Lucio is, like, really fun. I, like, really like... I really Lucio's, like, like, brain dead easy. Yeah, <laughs> you just press E when people need to heal and you just shoot people. It's pretty fun. Um, yeah. I didn't play he's also pretty much. quick, so it's not that um, that easy to catch him and stuff. I also like it that the games are pretty short, like maybe ten. The longest I've seen was like fifteen minutes, if uh, if it's like a close game. But I think yeah. that's a pretty decent game length for uh, you know any longer, shorter, you know, it'd be kind of kind of bad. Um, the only problem I had with the beta was that there was there was no like matchmaking thing, so like. One time we had like a level one person on our team, and then we just straight up lost because like he didn't know what the hell he was doing. Oh, yeah, there was like no MMR or anything. It was pretty. Uh... They'll probably do something about that once the full game comes out. Yeah, and also like nine point something million players played on it. Yeah, which that's is great. Kinda crazy. That's amazing because it's like I saw no lag the whole time. It was pretty pretty good. I mean, like Blizzard definitely prepared their servers. I mean, like sometimes you know a server would like shut down randomly, but. Yeah, there were definitely plenty of servers up and running for the game to be working efficiently and not to like shut the game down for like a temporary amount of time. Yeah, I really had that Blizzard polish, and I'll probably try getting competitive. I didn't get competitive in a game since like StarCraft or um, TF2. I'll, I'll try to try hard for this game. Blizzard has that thing that makes me want to try hard, so <laughs> I, I'll probably give it a go and see how far I get. Cause it's, I'm, I was pretty good. I, I got gold medals each game we played. You know, I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah, you something. know, playing as Lucio, all you gotta do is um uh, stand around your teammates and then you get a gold yeah, medal I was for healing. Farrah most of the time, so yeah, the game is good though. Uh, you should get it. <laughs> Everyone should get yeah, it. Yeah, you know, it's a pretty good game. Uh, if we would recommend the platform, definitely PC because it's twenty dollars cheaper. Yeah, for, like the normal for some edition. reason, yeah, console players near pay sixty yeah, and they, they don't get anything. They need to play sixty. I don't know why. That's, That's really lame. weird. Yeah, I don't. I don't because get it. I don't know. It, it, you're literally charging the people that that have to play on considerably worse hardware an extra twenty bucks. Yeah, I really don't. I they don't even get the skins like I did. I, I paid yeah. for the sixty dollars version, and got all my skins for for you know the game and um, it was like the origin edition. Yeah, the origin right, or edition. Like that. Yeah. So that's really uh, lame. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good game. Uh, I'm still on the fence on buying it or not. I'll probably just buy it when it comes out. It's to be it's honest. good. I, I'm gonna be playing it a lot. Anything else you've been playing recently? Uh, not really. I kind of just been like killing myself. Uh, no, I, I, mean, I was playing Diablo three actually because um, I unlocked uh, some other stuff because I pre-ordered the uh, sixty dollar version and I was just doing the um, some stuff in it because the seasons and you could like level up a new character and I did that and I finished that and now I just want to kill myself again while waiting for Overwatch. <laughs> So yeah, that, that's what, that's on been the my Overwatch life. Overwatch subreddit, just like when is it gonna come out? Yeah, that's basically what I've been doing. <laughs> Uh, what I've been playing, Uncharted 4 came out. And how is that? Is a masterpiece of a Ooh. game. Did you finish like, it? Yeah, I finished it. Oh, wow. It's so goddamn good. Like, I just, like, after we're done here, uh, I'm probably gonna write, like, my review script, because I still haven't done that yet, but by the time you guys are listening to this, it's probably already out, so, but Uncharted 4 at Thieves End is probably my favorite PlayStation 4 game right now, because it... The way that it does gameplay and cutscenes and just everything about the game is so good. I mean, like, there's there's one problem I have with the story is that it's kind of spoiler territory, so I'm not really going to talk about it, but it's it's kind of like the story doesn't take punches at it, if you know what I'm saying. What, like, does they it don't, take a risk? 
Yeah, it wait, doesn't wait, really. It did it end in a satisfying note, or do you wish to? Like... Yeah, it it ended pretty well because there was actually an epilogue chapter, oh. which was pretty good. I like it took me by surprise to be honest on the way that they showed it to us, and just like the ending in general is still pretty good, but like the story never took any risk, which right. is fine because like the outcome was still pretty good, but. You know, that's just a personal preference of mine. The shooting's still really good. The um, platforming, the puzzle solving, the graphics. Like, when when it moves from cinematic to gameplay, I barely notice it. Oh, wow. Like, the graphics are that good. Like, it, it's probably the best-looking PlayStation 4 game on the market right now. And Naughty Dog definitely took their time with it. Like, despite the amount of delays the game received, it was totally worth it in the end because... PlayStation and, and Sony know that no matter how many no matter how many delays Uncharted 4 gets, it'll still make them a lot of money. And I still haven't seen an article stating on how much money the game has made so far. So I'm definitely curious on how much money Naughty Dog and Sony have made together just on this one game. It's probably still a lot. So yeah, it, it it's probably a lot because this is just such a good game and like the amount of advertisement that they did for it like there's like posters in like many different countries there were many twitch ads that i saw and you know like the amount of press that this game has received and it's it definitely is well deserved because it's it's definitely 10 out of 10 material and some people say that it is their favorite game of all time i would have to (laughs) you know consider that a little bit because um you know, like, when you play this game, there are definitely callbacks to previous Uncharted games, which is, you know, sort of, like, fan service, I guess. Mm-hmm. And just, like, the way that they bring in Nate's brother in, I kind of question myself sometimes, but I'm just like, ah, oh, whatever. Because in Uncharted 3, you go back in the past with Nate, but they never did, um, he never talked about his brother back then. So now that his brother's here, I'm kind of just like, when did that part of the... Oh, when did that part of the story take place? Uh, when, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah so it, it. Hopefully that either someone explains it to me or I figure it out myself or Naughty Dog comes out. I don't know, but you know, just like the way that they implemented his brother, I feel like that they just did it because they had Troy Baker on and they <laughs> needed him to have a part. Yeah, but you know, like in the end, it kind of still makes sense, kind of. But you know, I just, I just wish that they gave us a reason exactly on or like gave us like a a con continuity right Is yeah that the word yeah because like, I, I know what you're talking about they just added someone and didn't really bother to explain it right yeah because like there's this part of uncharted 4 all right so like it shows nate and his brother in the prison but like in uncharted 3 there was um this part with younger nate but he wasn't with his brother so i'm like where was he during that time yeah you know? so and like stuff happens i don't know but Anyways, it's still a fun game. It's just me nitpicking at this point. So, you know, this is the end, right? This is the end of Uncharted? Is that what? Yeah, this should be the end. It, it, especially the way that it ended. Because, mm-hmm. and like, they're doing a DLC story, which I'm assuming it'll either explain the gap between the past event, like the the a flashback in Uncharted 3 and Uncharted 4 or something like that. It'll either explore Nate's past more, or it'll explore explore the ending more if you know what i'm saying yeah so i don't know we'll see because the um they decided to do a uncharted 4 dlc piece because of the success left behind had which was the last of us dlc piece so i can't wait for more uncharted action i still haven't been played the multiplayer because i don't have playstation plus oh right you need you need need that now right yeah you need that now which is annoying but maybe i'll buy like a month's worth and just try it out we'll see okay so uh, hopefully now we get jack four right is that what happens oh my god there's like rumors going around <laughs> about jack four and like sony denied any claims about a new crash bandicoot or something like that and uh yeah well <laughs> like since i think that this is the first time naughty dog has ever um went back to a franchise of theirs because they went from uncharted 3 to The Last of Us, to Uncharted 4. Yeah. So, so this do you is the think first... they can do uh, Last of Us 2 or something? Or um, That's what people are speculating. If they do do that, I, I'm just wondering if they'll do new people or we'll, or we'll continue our journey with Joel and Ellie. Which, if they do do that, I just want the emotional attachment of those two characters to just, like, 
you know, be there instead of just like, yeah, you know, we're just going to use these characters for the sake of using those characters, which probably won't happen because we're talking about Naughty Dog here, who have, I don't think they've ever made like a really bad game in their entire, uh, how do I say this, career or like whatever lifespan yeah. as a video game developer. So, and Naughty Dog's been pretty solid. <laughs> Yeah, they've been pretty solid. I'm not even gonna lie. Which is, I don't, I don't blame people saying that. You know, Naughty Dog is their favorite video game developer because they're pretty solid on what they do. You know, they always take their time. They they never rush anything out, and they they don't patch their games as much as. Um, I mean, like there was still a, a day one patch for Uncharted Four, mind you, but I don't think it had to do with like huge bug related i mean that's like problems. every game that comes out nowadays you yeah, always now, have to have a day one patch because like when i put in my my freaking uncharted 4 disc i had to put an update and i got so mad i was like oh my god i just want to play the game yeah so you know it's not it's not the way it works nowadays but maybe that will return to jack and daxter uh if they do let's just hope that it's good but i don't think that they will we'll just have to see when e3 comes around to be honest. Yeah, they might announce a new uh, thing because they finished it. So, Yeah, um, and then maybe they'll announce some other stuff. I'm just really excited for Sony, to be honest. When it comes to E3, like, Sony's, like, my number one thing that I'm looking at. I mean, last year, last year's E3 was just, like, huge. Like, Final Fantasy VII, Last Guardian. It's like, yeah. Jesus Christ. So I, I wonder how big this E3 is going to be. It's probably going to be a lot of emphasis on PSVR, if I were to guess. Yeah, probably, yeah. Oh, uh, one more thing. Uh, Persona no. 5 also got a release date. It's uh, September 15th, so I just want oh. to throw that out there. <laughs> I, I just remembered right now. Persona Actually, 5. It's only for Japan. That That's the Japan oh, okay. release date. Okay, so, we're so, pro- ju- so we'll probably get it in like the first quarter of next year. Probably. Assume, e- because e- it's an RPG, and you have to like translate all the text properly and all this other stuff. So e- Yeah, it might either be like first quarter of next year or like, like the very end of this year. I don't know. But yeah, I just want to throw out throw that out there because I just remembered <laughs> right now. So there you go. I'm hyped for that. So, <laughs> um, started on the solo queue grind again. You know, I lose a game, I win a game, I lose a game, I win a game. Oh shit! You know, <laughs> my god, man, I just waste so much time doing that because it's like, it's so luck based. Wait, what are you? Diamond? What? I'm still D five because oh, okay. of the way the I I I just hate dynamic queue. Like it's so annoying because. It's now Team Builder. Yeah, I've been ranked. hearing about a lot of people not really liking it. Yeah, not much. like if they did solo queue, that means dynamic queue would, would basically turn it into Team Builder, which then no one w- would play, <laughs> which is a good and bad thing for Riot because I don't know. I mean, like the game is definitely very team based, but it's also RNG on whether or not you have people on your team that will play as a team. Yeah. You know? Like, as a support main, I have to play as a team. I can't go around doing my own thing, but everyone else can because they have the power to do that. Well, I'm just a support that has to be with the team, play as a team, and people need to learn about that. And I don't think that'll happen until next season, which sucks because the way that Dynamic Q works is that people could boost each other, basically boost each other, to higher ELOs. And then that gets really annoying when they play by themselves. They play like garbage, and then they realize that they're bad and they shouldn't be in this elo. But didn't Riot say they would just not bring back solo key though? That wasn't that. Thing yeah, they said? at at first they wanted to do that, and then I guess they realized that it it would literally turn dynamic queue into team builder, which and then no one would play, and then everyone would just jump to solo queue. Oh, uh, okay. Which is pretty dumb because they should have they should have just implemented the roles system where it's like you pick two roles and then you queue up. They should have just done that instead of like doing this whole dynamic queue thing, which is really annoying. But we'll just have to see what Riot wants to do with the game because at at the moment it's kind of hard to climb as a support main, and it, and you know like it was already hard as is. You know? <laughs> so just yeah, making it, just it makes even it like harder. harder. Yeah. It just makes it a lot harder for me to climb because I'm just like I hope I get good teammates. I hope I get ADC that knows how to farm and do all this other stuff. So I don't know. But anything else I've been playing? Uh, not much. It's just been like a bunch of multiplayer games yesterday. But like Gang Beast is pretty fun. Screen cheats hard. Um, Lethal League is really good with no lag. Yeah, I love Lethal League <laughs> with no it's lag. So it's probably better. <laughs> yeah, and like sometimes I like hit too early because I think there's lag. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Duck Game is still really fun, and like it's even more hectic on LAN because 
no lag, and then when people mess up, you could just look at them like, what was that? <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, no, just like multiplayer Steam indie games are really fun. And like we played Samurai Gun, we played, I don't, we Tower didn't play Fall? Towerfall yet. Oh. No, we didn't play Towerfall. We played Samurai Gun though. And like, my brother's really good at, at shooting, obviously. <laughs> so he was just getting all of the gun kills, and that's how he would win most of the time. So, but I think that's about it on what and what I've been playing. So let's get into the beast, the monster that is Captain America: Civil War, a two and a half hour movie, right? Yeah. And it was awesome. It, it was, was really definitely good. worth it. So we're not going to talk about spoilers just yet, but. It was just a great movie, just like yeah. Um, I thought it was really good. I I I didn't feel like it dragged on too much. Like I think the two hours and a half was like justified because it got a lot yeah. of the things needed to get across and um, all the character development and all that stuff. It was really good. Nothing felt rushed. Yeah, nothing felt rushed at all. Yeah, they took that time, which was good. Uh, now it's kind of hard to talk about anything else without talking about spoilers. <laughs> yeah, so. I was trying like oh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so. Uh, now is the spoiler talk from now up until the end of the podcast is going to be spoilers on Captain America Civil War. If you haven't seen it yet, go see it if it's still in theaters by the time you're watching this. But if not, buy it on Blu-ray when it comes out or whatever. So let's go from the beginning of the movie. Okay. So that whole beginning scene with Crossbones and Captain America and his new Avengers running around trying to stop Crossbones. So, what do you think about that entire like scene as a whole? I think it was a pretty good way to introduce the movie. A lot of good action from the start, so you're not like bored or anything. It also um, shows the the problem that the Avengers cause a lot of destruction. Yeah, uh, the fact that um, Scarlet Witch accidentally just threw Crossbones up because he was about to like blow up Captain America, mm-hmm. saved him, but killed a lot of innocent people. Yeah, in she the was process. Like, awesome. Yeah, she like messed up. <laughs> and, like, I believe in the comics, it was actually a elementary school. Oh. So, that's, <laughs> that's even so worse. Yeah. That's so bad. So, that's just what I heard. I'm not exactly sure if that is what happened, but supposedly, she blew up in elementary school by accident. Oh, no. So, I think um, if they did that in this movie, it would definitely cause a lot of controversy. So, they just did an office building with people working there. And uh, the whole scene in general, I thought was really good when I first watched it. And then when I watched some other people talk about that first scene, people were complaining about the shaky cam. And I didn't even really notice that. I, I felt didn't like, notice that. Yeah. yeah, I didn't notice that. I felt like the scene was just natural and, like, the way that the action went. But people were complaining that, you know, there's too much shaky cam and all this other stuff. But I thought that the whole action sequence was great. And, like, the amount of comedy that the beginning sequence had, you know, like, I think Falcon was, like, say my bird's name or something. Like yeah. Red, Red Wing, right, I believe. Yeah. So... You know, just like, you know, it was a good start. I thought it was a really good opening scene because it it showed us a bunch of action, showed us the problem, you know, in the movie that the Avengers need to be contained. Yeah, and um, it was pretty good. (laughs) I I really liked that opening scene. I actually didn't really notice the shaky cam, actually. And then the um, uh, next scene was with Robert Downey Jr. showing a past sequence with him and his parents. And that scene kind of raised questions for me. I was like, why is this here? And then, like, he came out and was, like, pretty much giving out free money to all college students that were, like, doing, like, their project or something. Mm-hmm, something yeah. like that. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And then that that's Secretary of State, right? I believe that's what the position she held. Yeah. Uh, her son died in that office building. I was like, damn, you know. Yeah, it got intense there. Like, like, oh, Jesus. Jesus, you yeah. know. So, uh, obviously... When I came into the movie, I was with Tony Stark, you know, Team Team Tony Stark or, or Team Iron Man or whatever, just because they had Spider Man. But like, when you watch this movie, you were definitely on both sides throughout the whole entire movie. Like, you understand both views. Yeah, because um, they really showed like when that lady gave uh Tony Stark like the picture of her sons, like you killed him. He felt mm-hmm. very guilty that he did it, and like very like like down about it. So he felt yeah. like it was his duty to, like, all right, that's it. The Avengers need to be contained. Yeah, like, we need to be contained and stuff like that. So, And I thought that and, was, like, and Captain America's like, no, we got we to gotta do other stuff. You know, if people still need, more people would die if we and don't like, do anything. like, the push that he needed was um, during that speech when um, Peggy died and, like, her her niece came up and, like, said that speech. Yeah, yeah. About, like, being a root and, like, not moving or something like that. Like, taking your stance and, like, Captain America was basically like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. 
because that's what she did back then. Yeah. So, yeah, that basically gave him the push to be like, yeah, I'm going to just do this. <laughs> and, you know, it could have um, backfired and, you know, just like that whole scene with him and um, Agent 13 was pretty good. You know, it built chemistry and it just built pretty good character development, I would say, with between Captain America and Agent 13. Because yeah. before then, like, she was just a neighbor in Captain America's apartment complex and then was revealed to be a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. And then in this movie was now to be um, Peggy's niece. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but the whole, like, when um, General Ross, which we haven't seen since Incredible Hulk, which was 2008, oh, God, which was eight yeah. years ago. Yeah, I believe it was 2008. And then when he just shows, like, all these buildings collapsing and, like, innocent people dying, like, it it wasn't just, like, stock footage. It was actual, like, new footage that they came up with with, like, the cell phone cameras and stuff like that with, like, Hulk jumping building to building and all this other stuff. Yeah, I like that because, you know, people, all the, you know, bystanders, like, recording all the destruction and all that stuff. Yeah, like, if they just showed footage from, like, the first Avenger it movie, been cheap. <laughs> I, yeah, it would have been cheap and it would have been, like, how did they get that close without dying, you know? <laughs> yeah. So... And, you know, you kind of just see them, like, split apart, you know, as, like, Team Iron Man, Team Cap, or whatever. And, like, I felt, a lot of people actually felt like um, Team Iron Man, like, Tony Stark as, like, a a character was kind of just, like, being too protective. No, I don't think so. Because I I think that whole, again, the whole death with the Secretary of State's, like, son really got to him. And, like... He said something in that scene, too. Like, you know, that kid could have gone to college, got a good job, and then he just died because of us. So, like, yeah. I, I, think it built, I think it built a good sense of why he doesn't want to, like, run around anymore. And, you know, possibly I mean, like, the whole people. thing with um, uh, Scarlet Witch that he was trying to, like, keep her oh. in the house and everything. Well, I mean, she's, like, OP. Like, her, her and Vision, <laughs> are, like, like, they could, like, destroy the whole planet if they wanted to. Yeah. And Scarlet Witch is pretty young, so, like, she probably doesn't know how to control her powers that well. So, Not yet, anyways. Yeah, so it's like, that's why they want to keep her contained. I don't think it was because, you know, they just want to keep her and everyone else safe, that's why. And then um, when they went to go and sign the bill itself, um, the building got blown up, and it was supposedly the Winter Soldier, which later in the movie was revealed to be, um, I forget the villain's name. Yeah, I forgot his name, but he was like, uh, he like got him to do Zemos stuff. or something like that. Yeah, he, like, repeated those weird words, and then he was like, oh, no. And he got triggered, yeah. and then he blew it up. So. <laughs> he got triggered. But, yeah, uh, like, all right, so let's talk about Black Panther. Because... Uh, Black Panther was cool. He had a yeah. lot bigger part in the movie than I thought he would. <laughs> uh-huh. Like, he was in a lot more scenes. Than, like, I didn't know he was going to be, like, that involved. I thought he was just going to show up, like, like, um, like uh, well, Spider-Man didn't really show up, but you know what I mean. Not... Well, he kind of did. Yeah, he kind of did. He, like, more of a cameo. But no, he he was pretty involved. Yeah, Black Panther's uh, character development was extremely good because like he went from this guy into a guy that was going for revenge and was revealed to um, have like the suit and everything. And how do I put this into better words? Um, he was just a pretty good character, I would say. Just like yeah, he had good motivation, like you know. Yeah, you know, like trying to get revenge on the person that killed him. Yeah, own at first father. he, at first he just wanted to kill Bucky because he thought that that's who killed his father. But it was later revealed it was the other dude. So then he, and then he didn't him. kill him because he realized that revenge is stupid. Or something. Yes, basically. Yeah, <laughs> in, 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 <laughs> in the really simple terms, yeah. But revenge is dumb. He he was really cool though. Um, they had a cool fight scene when they were chasing. Uh, who yeah, the they? whole um the whole Winter Soldier. And Captain Black America. Panther and Captain America chasing each other. And, you know, before they start chasing each other, you know, um, Cat was in Bucky's apartment. And then Bucky shows up. Then they start talking. He's like, you know me. Mm-hmm. You you know me. And then he's like, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, the whole chase scene happens. And, and that was really a really good scene. Like, yeah. it did all of the shots really well. There were no, like, points where I, like, questioned what was going on. Like, I just went with it. Yeah, they were like finding like a stair, a stairwell, and it would you know it's pretty creative. Uh, mm-hmm. Like Bucky was about to kill some dude, and Captain America just grabs yeah, him. Yeah, you know, Captain America man. always has to make sure, that, <laughs> always has to make sure that no one dies. Yeah, you know? so I thought that was pretty cool too. Um, and then it went into the chase scene, 
So that was another good action scene. Um, I think then Iron Man and uh, War Machine show up after that, right? Uh, they were they were in the uh, base where they took Captain America, Bucky, and all of them, oh, I man. believe. Okay. So and then, uh, what's it called? Uh, the the Winter Soldier gets triggered by the words because like <laughs> stuff happens with like the um uh, cameras, so like no one knows what's going on. And when the Winter Soldier breaks out, everyone is just basically trying to stop him, trying to make sure that he doesn't kill anyone because he's under that those words i don't know what the heck you know like i don't know yeah I, it, was, it was something with the um winter soldier uh program thing they were doing yeah like when they went um back in the past and, and showed us what was going on before everything happened and like how how bucky became the winter soldier basically and took these orders when these words were said yeah and you know, they didn't yeah. really explain it that much, but it's like you say these words. It's probably something to put in his brain or something that makes him, like, mind-controlled or something. They didn't really explain that too well, but... Yeah. Um, but uh, when when Captain America basically goes into hiding with Bucky and the Falcon, uh, and then Bucky realizes that he is the bad guy, and he was under this mind-control spell... And that's where Captain, Captain America understands. But everyone else doesn't know that. Everyone else sees Bucky as someone that basically killed everyone. Yeah. They see him as the villain. And Captain America knows better. And then they talk about war. Like, he he reveals these Winter Soldiers. There were more of them. And they were all, like, on the, the island that he was on before. And that's basically where they wanted to go after that. But before then, they needed to go and recruit people for that airport or whatever, that fight scene. Yeah, the basically. whole airport scene, yeah. So they got um, Ant-Man on um, Captain America's team. So it was Ant-Man, Falcon, Captain, Captain America, America. obviously. Um, Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch. Uh, Hawkeye? Yeah, Hawkeye was there. Uh, yeah. He's the one that um, basically got Scarlet Witch out of um, Vision's little, like, Well, like, Vision was just watching over her, and, like, when Scarlet Witch realized that she can take control of Vision and then just threw him down (laughs) into the floor, like, that was, that was pretty cool. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, that's the only person that can handle Vision. Yeah. There's, like, no one else, basically. Like, I was gonna say someone else, but there's no one else. Like, Scarlet Witch is OP. Yeah, Scarlet Witch and and Vision are, like, the most OP people, so they're, like, the only two people that can fight each other. (laughs) So, um... Tony Stark, oh my god, the whole Spider-Man scene. When yeah, right right when it said Queens. So, yeah. Queens, yeah. it was over. It was oh, over. It's Spider-Man. Like, the amount of comedy and the amount of laughs that it were had during that one scene, you know, where, where Tony found his old suit and was like, how do you see through these? And the fact that um, Peter Parker and Tom Holland, great Peter Parker, like, the best one, just yeah. because of, like, the way Marvel knows how Spider-Man works, obviously. So, like, they got him talking smack mid-fight. You know, like, he's a young kid. He doesn't really know what he's doing. And, yeah, he like, really felt like Spider-Man. Like, like it was really good. <laughs> yeah, because, like, Tobey Maguire, um, I think um, Ted from Brain Scratch was, like, he's a 30-year-old trying to play a high school student, which, you know, now that I look back, you know, the old Spider-Man movies, that's basically what he was trying to do. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty... Uh, and also his voice. Uh, he didn't have that same enthusiasm as Spider-Man should. Yeah. And I thought, um, what's his face from Amazing Spider-Man? What was Andrew it? Garfield? Yeah, I thought he was he was pretty good. Yeah, he was a good Spider-Man for being in average movies. Yeah. like I think he, he kind of helped save those movies. <laughs> yeah, he's basically the... um. The one thing about those movies that's like really, really good. Like no matter, no matter what movie you talk about, he was still a good Spider-Man. Yeah. Because what he had to work with, and like Sony, you know, not really understanding what to do with Spider-Man still. And you know, I just wish that um, Andrew Garfield was able to stay on, but you know, they just wanted to go and get someone new, which was for the better because Tom Holland is a great Spider-Man. I also like it that, um, you know, instead of going to the college route, the, he is in the high school yeah, setting. Yeah, he is still in high school. Which is cool. I like a, I like a more younger Spider-Man. And I think they did a good job with his character. He just felt like Spider-Man. It was great. And um, going back to that whole scene with um, Tony Stark and Peter Parker in his room, 
you know, just seeing that he only had his powers six months ago, which would make sense, which is why he wasn't in the Avengers and Avengers 2, you know, so Marvel did really think about on when, when was the time frame that he got these powers, you know. So he's still new to being Spider-Man. Yeah, that, that explains still, the continuity and stuff as well. Yeah, and he's still, you know, a kid and everything like that. And just every single scene, whenever Spider-Man was on screen, I was just smiling. Because yeah, he was, it was so really good. good. And the comedy that comes with him and Tony Stark, like him and Tony Stark are like the funniest people in the movie. He's like, yo, your aunt's pretty hot, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, Aunt May was super young for some reason also. <laughs> uh, she looked young. She's actually like 50. Oh, Jesus. All right. Yeah, she's actually like 51. Mm-hmm. She's... Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> she's around the same age as uh, Robert Downey Jr. Jesus. Okay. So, yeah, like there was just a lot of makeup put on. And you know what? It just it just made that scene a lot better. Yeah. And when... um. The excuse Peter made that he couldn't join um, Iron Man. I got homework, man. Yeah, I got I got algebra. <laughs> like it's just like yeah. it's very really funny. I, I got homework, <laughs> you know. So, and then um, when they first showed um, Spider Man in his new suit, he's like, "Hey, you know, Cap, big fan." You know, he's <laughs> like, "Oh my god, I just cannot wait for Homecoming and see what Marvel would do with that because." Just from seeing him in Civil War is definitely promising on what he can do in his own solo movie. Yeah. He, which he will definitely strong... make a lot of money. Yeah. Probably not as much as Civil War because Civil War is about to hit $1 billion, I believe. Jesus Christ. So, yeah, this movie's definitely making in bank. And going back to the airport scene, the whole, the whole scene, everyone was fighting, and it was so, so good. Yeah, it's basically and just as awesome as you think it would be. You know, everyone just all everyone all, fighting using all their of the abilities. superheroes fighting, but you know that none of them will die, which kind of sucks. Well, I don't think I don't think they want to kill each other more. Like, I mean, like in Civil War, people did die. Yeah, yeah, but in the movie, they definitely took liberties and did not take those same risks as the comics did because you know it's a comic book movie. Yeah, I think in and, the comics know, they were more aggressive towards each other and they were very set on their ideals. While this one is like, yo, I don't want to fight you, but I'm going to fight you anyway. Yeah, because so, yeah. in the comics, um, Captain America actually died. Yeah. And they can't do that because um, they still have Avengers um, 3 coming. So they yeah, got to like, somehow, <laughs> you know, bring, um, what's it called, um, Captain America back in. So this is going to be like a lot of like continu- continuity stuff that they have to like work out. So they just like left everyone alive, you know. But... Uh, when when Black Widow revealed that she was a double agent, it kind of caught me off guard. Despite me knowing that she is always, you know, a double agent type type of character. Yeah. So, and then um, just like yeah, just like the whole fight, and then Ant Man, oh my, Giant Man, the Giant, giant man. man, yeah, that was, was pretty so sick. Good. It not, was pretty troll at first. I'm not even gonna lie. Because Ant Man was very derpy. Like he was like super derp in the whole. <laughs> Here's your shield, Captain America. Yeah. <laughs> like he was such a fanboy, along with like Spider Man, obviously. Yeah, Spider Man too. Yeah. You know, he's been watching these heroes on news, and then he just gets to fight with them. That's kind of you know fanboy, obviously, all all around. And then Ant Man shaking Captain America's hand too long. You know, there's like so many great funny moments in this movie. We're probably not gonna get to all of them. Yeah. So, um, but and then Captain America and Bucky managed to go and get on the plane because of Black Widow. And then they are on the way to the island where the Winter Soldiers were. Wait, you didn't, you didn't say that uh, War Machine got shot and then he can't walk forever? Oh, no? my. <laughs> the way that the trailers had it made it seem like Bucky shot him, which kind of makes sense on how, you know, the Civil War happens and why Iron Man said, you just started a war and all this other stuff Yeah, in the trailers, which was really good. You know, whoever did the trailers for Civil War, great job because you definitely left a lot of, um, you um, turned the viewers into a different direction than what the movie showed because Falcon dodged the shot, but War Machine didn't, and now he's paralyzed from the waist down. So, you know, that sucks, but he'll probably still be able to fly in I really the thought War he was Machine dead. suit. <laughs> I didn't think that he died, to be honest, because they just if, showed him in the trailer. If anyone was going to die, it would have been War Machine, because it's not like he's <laughs> doing much anyway. I mean, 
you're kind of right, you know, since, like, Iron Man 3, he hasn't really done much for the Avengers, but he is still considered a Avenger because he has Tony's suit, and he knows what to do with it. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, what comes next? Uh, they visit the, um, Team Cap, uh, all of, all of the members have been imprisoned, and I, and Tony Stark takes a visit because he wants to know where Captain America went, and... I think at this point, Tony Stark understands that there are multiple Winter Soldiers and team and Captain America is doing what he thinks is right. Yeah, I think I believe. I'm not exactly sure. It's been a while since we saw it. So yeah, basically he just like saw them all in prison, and then he finds out later that um that Captain America was right about there being more Winter Soldiers, and it's a bigger threat if he just like you know leaves them there. So he's like, oh crap. So then he uh. Releases all of them, then they all go to that. Um, I don't know what it. When did it go? No, no, no. Like, he doesn't. He doesn't release them from prison. He kind of just um. Oh, uh, he kind of just like yeah. He mutes the cons and then he's like, "All right, Falcon, tell me where Tony went. You got like three seconds or something like that." And then he tells them, and then, and then General Ross was like, "What did he tell you?" And, he, and he's like, "Yeah, you know, he kind of just cursed at me and stuff." Right, or right, like, right, right, right. Yeah. And then he went, and that's where uh, they find out that there. Are, all the Winter Soldiers were dead, which kind of caught me by surprise. And then when they show the movie clip, and then Tony said, "I know that street," I'm like, "Oh no!" Yeah. And then just seeing just seeing Bucky murder um, Tony's parents right there, I was like, "Oh god!" And then he just turns on Bucky, and then Captain America is trying to instigate, but at the same time, um, Captain America knew about this. Like he could have told. He could have told Tony this a while ago, but but he chose not to to protect him. But in reality, he was just protecting himself. Yeah, you know. So then this whole battle between Iron Man and Winter Soldier and go on and stuff like that, and it was a really good scene. You know, it it had a lot of emotion and conflict behind it because for all these years, um, Tony did not know how his parents died. Yeah, so and... it was it was like a really upsetting for him to like just see that happen, and for especially like... for his mom because like he didn't have a really close relationship with his father. Yeah, and you know he had a close relationship with his mother, which is why um, he says you ki- he killed my mom instead of saying he killed my parents. Yeah, you know it kind of just shows on um, the relationship he had between his parents. Uh, just like one one. He had a stronger relationship with his mother than his dad, basically. Yeah. And that whole fight scene was great because it showed them going back and forth. And you could say the battle ended on a tie or, like, Captain America won or whatever. But um, I just think it ended in a tie because, you yeah, know. I think it Buc- ended in a tie, yeah. Bucky lost his arm. <laughs> yeah, he got and blasted then, off. Like, he just yeah, got wrecked. Everyone in the theater was like, oh. Yeah, like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, no one, no one saw that one coming, I'm pretty sure. Because, like, in the um, uh, trailer, it, it shows Bucky doing that, and then it's like, can't can't Iron Man just, like, shoot his arm off, like, right there? You know, so that's, that's exactly what happened. So, uh, and then Bucky and Captain America walk away, and Cap actually leaves his shield because of the words Tony said. Like, that, that shield doesn't belong to you. You know, my father made that. Yeah, so then he and left it, yeah. I guess I guess Cap was like, yeah, you know, you're right. I had him just leave this here with all the marks and battle damage it has had throughout this entire movie. So, uh, and then it cuts back to Tony going back to his house, you know, trying to um, ease Rhodey with his new legs. And then finally, the Stan Lee cameo. Yeah, Stan Lee, Tony Stank. <laughs> Tony Stank, that's probably the best one we've heard in a while. <laughs> And then um, Rhodey goes on about a couple of jokes, like a table, two, a table for two for Tony Stank or whatever, you yeah. know. It's like, and then Tony gets a package which was from Captain America, and he, during um, the reading of that letter, you just see Captain America break in and break everyone out, which makes sense because there's going to be a Ant Man sequel, and then some other movies and stuff like that so it, it kind of makes sense to like break them out there because then it's like how will ant-man get out because ant-man can't get out actually <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure like by himself he even with the avengers around him he can't get out of there because he doesn't have a suit basically he's he's just a normal human being at that point 
Yeah, the thing that makes him is his suit. Which you, you, you could say for Iron Man too, but That's Tony true. Stark <laughs> knows he kinda knows what he's doing in the suit, you know. Yeah. But uh yeah, I don't think there's really anything else. I mean, it 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 was just good in terms of like the action, the story, I think. I mean, like some people say like the story was weak and a lot of people say that you could just cut out Spider-Man from the movie and he wouldn't affect the plot. That is true, but like the experience and just like the movie in general on how it worked out, the movie would definitely be a lot um less how do i put this it wouldn't be as enjoyable. highly acclaimed and yeah. like enjoyable i guess you know because so many people are like yeah man this movie's great especially spider-man because you know this is the first time we've seen a spider-man that was done extremely well so i mean yeah you could cut them out for like story purposes but like it wouldn't be the same movie if you know what i'm saying i thought it was just cool that he was there like it's cool to see him in the actual marvel thing you know like you know with the cinematic yeah. universe it's kind of like tied with Sony and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. So I guess we should talk about the after credits scenes. All right. So the first one was with Thanos, which was pretty simple. He, I think he said, uh, "If you want to get get a job done right, you do it yourself." And then he grabbed the gauntlet. So it pretty much teases um, Avengers: Infinite War, mm-hmm. which I think that they're going to change the title. That's what I heard. But whatever the title is, it's going to be Avengers uh, Three. And then the second post credit scene was with Spider Man, and he gets the um, uh, little spotlight thing that he, I believe he had that in the comics. I think so. So, uh, and then it says Spidey will return, which is obviously hinting at Spider Man Homecoming, which is very, very exciting, and I cannot wait for that movie. So, yeah, it, it's gonna be really hype for that movie. And, you know, Civil War did its job, you know, it brought in a new storyline it brought in um the conflict between the avengers and i think in the end i think they're like mutual about it like they obviously tony is still on the side of like you sign this and then cabot is still on the side of the the greatest hands are still our own you know like despite you know losing a couple of lives they saved millions in the process which is kind of why some people say you know team cap but you know team iron man you know just try to save everyone, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Just, like, throughout the whole movie, I was both sides because of just the way the directors and the way the actors did it, did their job, basically. So, uh, yeah. Just so, overall, it's great fantastic. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a great movie. There's, like, nothing else to really talk about, I think. Just watch it. Like, if you haven't watched it yet, I don't know what's wrong with you. Just go watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was thinking about seeing it again, and then I was like, ah, never mind. I'm probably going to yeah. see it again with my parents and brother. They still haven't seen it yet? Still not yet, no. Oh, my God, man. They were, their minds are going to blow up because yeah. the movie is fantastic. It's really good. Know? So, all right. That is the end of the Two Players podcast. Uh, thank you guys for listening once again, and we will see you guys two weeks from now with another episode. See you guys then. Bye.